Hi everyone, this is Kathy Drew from Gina's Bernina Sewing Center. This is our very first video in our line of heirloom machine sewing videos. So what we're going to cover in this video is an explanation of the fabrics, laces, and trims that you might want to use in your heirloom sewing. So let's get started. We're going to start out talking about the lace products that you might want to use. And most of these heirloom laces are not about 80-90% cotton. And then they have a small amount of nylon in them just to give them a little bit of stretch to them so they won't tear. These are very delicate, beautiful laces. And I just want to explain a little bit about them so you'll have a better understanding of where to use them. Now let's start out right in the center here. This is a lace insertion. Actually, all four of these are lace insertions. Uh, they are primarily used to sew together to make a lace band, a lot like what you just saw on my dress. You can use different patterns together. Doesn't have to be a matching pattern of laces. But you sew them together by joining the straight sides. So you'll notice the lace insertions always have two straight sides. And hopefully you can see that on each side there is a little band of threads and these threads are generally used whenever you want to shape your laces for uh, making patterns on your garment or project. Now there are tiny little gathering threads in there and when we get ready to do that in one of our samples I will talk to you about how to find that one gathering thread in that lace band and how to pull it to shape that band into whatever shape you need it to be in uh, without breaking it. Uh, they are, they can be a little fragile, so there's a few tips that I can give you on that. But what you need to know is you do not have to run a gathering thread on these lace insertions. Now, when I go shopping for, for my lace, if I can't find an insertion as wide as I would like, don't worry, you can always put them together or just add a very tiny insertion on each side to where you can grow it by adding those insertions of different sizes to get the look that you want or the width that you want in those insertions. Isn't that pretty? You can generally find lace insertions in white or in ecru. Sometimes you can run up on some ivory, but I haven't seen it very often. They, they tend to be a little bit more on the ecru line. So let's talk a little bit about the beadings. Now beading is just like an insertion. It has that straight side on each uh, of the sides of the insertion, but you'll notice there are holes in the lace so that you can run ribbon in and out of the holes just so you can add a little extra amount of elegance to whatever it is that you're working on. So you can see on the sleeve of this little dress, I ran some uh, ribbon through it and you can actually uh, tighten that up to make it fit the child's arm because you can pull on your ribbon to do that. Okay, you can find the beadings also in white at Ecru. You'd probably be able to use about a quarter of an inch wide ribbon here and an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch in this one and an eighth of an inch in that one. So there are beadings for different size ribbons that you might want to use. Now this is your lace edging. Edgings will always have a straight edge and a scalloped edge on one side. And the name pretty well tells you when you use them, they are generally placed on the edge of something, the edge of a collar, the edge of a sleeve, you know, they're always used for that. And there again, you have those uh, gathering threads on that straight side that you will use to gather them up to fit whatever area you need them to fit for a, a for an armband or for your collar. And we'll be doing gathering and attaching. Now, whenever you create, or I should say whenever I create a lace band, and I'm just gonna kinda do a mock one here for you. 
whenever I create a lace band, there is something that I always do, and that is apply one of our items that is called Entredeaux. Now, Entredeaux is not stretchy. There again, it's all cotton. It's an embroidered uh, piece. You can see it's got tiny little holes in it. And whenever I create a lace band, and if you have a child that you're planning on making this for, that's like my youngest one was, if anybody can get their knee hung in their hemline and tear out that lace, it would have been Mandy. And so whenever I created that lace band before I inserted it uh, into the fabric, and this is what I mean by that, like here's lace and here's lace, you will find that I have always added that entredeau between fabric and lace. That just supports that lace and keeps it from tearing. So that is my personal preference. You may find people that do it differently and that is their choice, but I'm gonna be sharing with you what I prefer to do and then you may find your own preferences as well. You will sometimes see where people have added the entredeau between the pieces of lace I'm not really a fan of doing that. I think it makes it takes away from the lightness of the lace, but some people love the way that looks. And so if that's what you want to do, by all means, you can do that. So entredeau is another item that you need to have in your stash uh, for doing heirloom and sewing. It's a very important piece. So we've talked about lace insertions, lace edgings, and lace beading, and entredeau. I want to give you a little bit more of an explanation about the entredeau. Entredeau always comes with fabric on each side. In other words, it's a strip of fabric that has the entredeau embroidered right down the center. Whatever you're working with entredeau, you will trim off the side that you are getting ready to attach to something. And you only want to trim one side off so that it will leave you a little something to hang on to when you're guiding it through your machine. All right, so you'll be seeing it. We'll be doing all this when we get to our sewing techniques as well. Now, the next trims that you're going to uh, be seeing in your heirloom stores are um, the eyelets or the embroidered trims. These are generally embroidered on the fabric. This is an insertion, and this particular insertion has entredeau on each side of it. So when you were getting ready to use it, you'd trim one side off, attach it, then trim the other side off and attach it. This is an eyelet beading. You can see it has the holes for you to run your ribbon through. And this is another type of beading. Really, it's just embroidered. It's just very, uh, a little bit heavier. Here we have our edgings. There again, this is always embroidery on fabric for your eyelet or embroidered edgings. This one is, is the type that you would probably use if you wanted to gather it up into a ruffle to go along the edge of something. This one, you would use it flat because it's already got your entredeau attached to one side. So this would be a great option to use on maybe a boy's collar or down the front of a little boy's uh, outfit where the buttons are or anytime you just don't want to gather that uh, material to get your edging in a gathered look. And here's another beautiful piece. So you can find some really yummy uh, eyelet embroidered uh, insertions in laces. And there again, this just gives a little bit of a heavier look if you want something that's not quite as airy and delicate as uh, the laces are, then this is just giving you a little bit heavier look and it's perfect for certain materials and fabrics. Now, we also have embroidered insertions. There again, it's fabric that is machine embroidered in the factory. This has got a beautiful little feather stitch running down and then it has a bouillon to highlight in some different colors. You can also get embroidered edging. So you can see this particular trim comes in a lot of different colors. This one's yellow. It's just some that I had. I thought I would show you. And so you can get this kind of look to highlight your um, 
uh, heirloom sewing as well. I was looking at this one. This was one of my favorite ones. Uh, I don't even know if you can get it anymore, but this was one of my favorite edgings. I loved it. It had the little daisies and the little pink flower. Just so pretty. I, I have collected these over the years, and like I said, my girls are grown, so I generally don't sew for them anymore but i have made some flower girl dresses for weddings and believe it or not i have kept every single thing i have ever made for my girls so uh what was i going to show you oh so we have the embroidered insertions that you can purchase but now that we have embroidery machines we can make our own so this particular insertion was one that i created and embroidered on my embroidery machine and you can see it is beautiful so we are able to do a lot of things now that we have those fabulous embroidery machines and i just highlighted the collar with some additional embroidery designs as well and those were all done on my 880 plus embroidery machine i think that's really cool i love being able to do that um let's see what else do i want to show you i'm so excited i want to show you everything now this is another dress that I made for uh, my oldest daughter, Michelle. Uh, it has got some age on it, cause like I said, my daughters are in their 40s now. But uh, you can see that this has some lace shaping in the yoke, the curving, and I want to teach you all how to do that. And notice all these pin tucks that are in the fabric. We will be doing that as well. And I've got some pin tucks outlining the hemline at the bottom. Let's see, there you go. Maybe you can see that a little bit better now. And then you can see right there, I've got that entredeau inserted between that lace and fabric. And the lace is gathered. So these are just some of the techniques that I wanted to show you so you would know what to expect in the upcoming videos. Dope. and I did the embroidery on the back of that as well. Now this embroidery was hand done back when my hands could do it. I don't know if you could see it. Let me see if I can flip that over a little bit. Oh no, it's probably not going to show that well for you. There you go. And that is in the center front. The bow is shadow embroidered and then these are just some tiny little uh, daisy stitches with eyelets in the middle and some fritch knots to outline her monogram there in the center. But that was back when the old hands worked better and I was able to do that. Okay, so there's that dress I wanted to show you. Here's another one that I made. And also it was hand embroidered as well, but look how pretty that is. This embroidery goes all the way down the front. And with today's machines, if you can't do the hand embroidery like I can't anymore, we can do a lot of this with our embroidery machines. And then I just highlighted that beautiful embroidery with a lace band on each side. And look, I've got entredeau where this piece of fabric is and on the other side. And that just supports that lace band You'll see it also at the bottom in the hemline. On each side of that lace band, I have put that entredeau, okay? Now, with this lace edging was attached flat, and I rolled and whipped the fabric first, which is another technique you're going to learn. And then I rolled and whipped a second time, which is a little different from what I've seen uh, uh, some of the uh, videos and uh, designers doing. I rolled and whipped the fabric first and then rolled and whipped that rolled edge over the lace because my kids were a little rough on their garments and I was finding that that lace was pulling off. So uh, I will be teaching you how to do that also in some of the upcoming videos. I don't know that I can share the hand embroidery with you. I will try my best in another video to uh, kind of give you an idea of how to do it. It may not look the best. My fingers just don't cooperate like they used to. But I tell you what I am going to show you. 
I am going to show you how to make your lace insertions with the embroidery machine. This is another garment that I made for an article in Classic Sewing Magazine. This was all machine embroidery and you can see it is just as beautiful as the hand sewn embroidery on some of the other dresses. This is also made out of uh, satin batiste, which we're going to talk about the fabrics in just a little bit. And here's a little pillow I thought you might enjoy seeing because I'm going to take all the pieces of my demos and I'm going to put it together in a brand new pillow. This is puffing. This is where it is a piece of fabric that's gathered on both sides. We're going to learn that. We're going to learn making our own lace band with beading. We're also going to do our own machine embroidered insertion. This particular one is shadow embroidery on the embroidery machine and we're going to use insertion that incorporates that technique so that you can learn that as well. All right. I think you'll enjoy that. And then you can take all your little pieces if you sew along with me and make your own uh, pillow as well. Now the fabrics that I like to use are generally uh, natural fiber fabrics. This is a Swiss Batiste. Uh, that is what this pillow was made out of. It's very soft, 100% cotton. This is Nalona. And uh, you can see that it's, it's really light and airy and it works beautifully with the laces. I love it. I also love to use linen in all my, uh, in a lot of my uh, projects. Uh, I love the texture that the linen gives. And with the linen, you can use lace or you could also use an eyelet because it's got a little bit more body to it and the fabric will uh, hold up with that uh, heavier eyelet trims and things like that. They're, it's balanced with the weight of the two. And I love linen. It's one of my favorites. And that blue dress I showed you earlier was on a linen. This is a satin batiste, just like I used. It's probably a piece that was off of this dress. And hopefully you can see that the satin batiste is very lightweight and airy as well but it does have a shimmer to it on one side. So uh, it's just really pretty. I like the way the light reflects off of it and I, I just enjoy working with it. So I'm showing you all my favorite things that I like to do sewing with. And this is a Swiss flannel. It's very pretty. It's soft, a little bit fuzzy, but it's light enough that you can use heirloom embroidery on it. It's great for baby clothes or uh, baby gowns that you might want to make. I love it. It's uh, hard to find sometimes, but uh, just keep searching. You'll find it. It's wonderful to work with. Now, for those of you that need a little bit more affordable price point, you can use regular weight batiste. Uh, regular batiste is cotton with about 10%, I think, maybe 20% uh, percent of polyester in it. It's light enough that you can uh, do a lot of the techniques on it. The only exception might be when you do pin tucking. You might get a little bit of rippling between the rows of the pin tucks because of the polyester. And if you try to do any type of hem stitching with a wing needle, uh, it might not work as well. The holes will try to close up and it might want to pucker up on you a little bit. Uh, I don't like to use stabilizer whenever I'm doing those techniques, but uh, those are the only issues that you might have with any of the regular weight fabrics that have a little bit of polyester in them, but they are more affordable. So if you wanted to start out learning on that before you jump to the uh, more expensive uh, fabrics, that would be great. Great, you could still do that. Now for our items and a lot of what I'm going to be demoing that I'll end up putting in a pillow, we are going to be using a linen. Okay, now I store most of my laces. I try to wrap them on a, uh, this is a, what do they call it? A comic book card. And I wrap them to keep them uh, nice and neat when I have leftovers, and then I have uh, acid-free tissue paper that I wrap around it, and then I pop them in a cotton pillowcase and pack them away. Now, these are very old. I've had this since I was sewing for my girls, so you can see they've held up really well. And all those pieces that I was showing you earlier is some of my stash. So I think I have covered 
everything. But one thing I do want to remind you about is that if you cannot find any of these items that I'm going to show um, today or that I've already shown you and that I am getting ready to show again, we're going to talk about uh, presser feet and needles and threads. Don't forget that you can go on uh, Gina's uh, website at ginasbernina.com and she is a full has a full heirloom department. Uh, so you can shop online if you can't find exactly what you need or you have any kind of difficulty with doing that. Don't hesitate to give us a call at 866, no, 865, 966-5941. <laughs> or you can email us at info at genusbernina.com. So we really wanna help you guys through all this and um, uh, give you any kind of help in picking out the proper uh, materials and so forth to use. And she carries everything, everything that you could ever want to use for your heirloom sewing. All right, so I think that's enough for our first video. That's a lot for you guys to remember. And uh, the next one I'm going to talk about the machine, how to set it up, the presser feet that you're going to need, your needles, your threads, and any of the other accessories that might be helpful for you. All right. I can't wait. We'll do our second one soon. And then we're going to get to some sewing. I'm getting excited now. Thanks, guys. I appreciate so much you watching. And bye-bye now.